Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, if you're watching this, it's two o'clock in the morning on Cyber Monday. And I don't know, is anybody else really just over the amount of emails that they're getting right now? Because I mean, I get it. You buy something, you get put on a list. You sign up for a freebie, you get put on a list. Um, you sneeze, you get put on a list. And so as I was spending my time promoting my Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and now Cyber Monday sales, I realized that I was inundated literally with so many emails from multiple people, but a lot of the emails from the same people, not, not just the big brands, but all of the little all of the smaller businesses that I've supported and gotten on their list to get a free thing or uh, this, that, and the other. And, and what I realized was something really important. And let me know if you feel this way. Um, we all love a sale, like we love a good deal. I got the flyaways right now, well, it's late, it's late. Um, we all love a good deal. We love a freebie, we love a sale. We love, love, love to think that we are getting a great deal. But how many of you are looking at your inbox going, I don't even remember signing up for most of this stuff. Or you're looking at your inbox and you're like, I don't have time to go go through these emails. I mean, case in point, I think I've gotten, I can't even count the number of gap emails I've gotten <laughs> about Black Friday, which started I think last Wednesday, uh, emails from Gap from REI, who I happen to also shop at. Um, and then from Barnes & Noble, which I think is kind of interesting. Fashion Nova, whew, Lord, the Fashion Nova emails. Um, lands in Refinery20, like so many emails, <laughs> so many emails, to the point where I haven't actually opened my primary inbox, the one that's not business related. I haven't opened that inbox probably since before Thanksgiving, because I get a little notification that there's, you know, there are emails in it, and they show up on my screen, and I just kind of swipe them away. Swipe them away. Now, here's the thing. I know that there are probably some great deals in those emails, and it would behoove me to open them and read them, and that's the point. That's why they keep sending them to you, so that you open them and you read them, and you don't miss out on, on a really good deal. Um... But here's the other piece to this, that just for me, uh, you know, I, I like to say we women of a certain age have a little bit of a different perspective on things. I am the kind of consumer who, I like a good deal, and I will bargain, I will haggle. I've learned the art of haggling living in other countries. You learn the art of haggling, um, and to always haggle full price is a no-no. But there are certain things that are more important like my time and I don't know what it is I think maybe it's because after two years of literally being <laughs> so cloistered I was talking to my hair my uh, hairdresser and um there's some beautiful head red hair under this headband I need to wash my hair so the headband's on um and they were talking about going out for Black Friday going out early on Black Friday and I thought wow we're really back we're really back to that we're back to that um which is you know more power to people i have no issues i have nothing for or against black friday uh sales in stores and the the congregation of people who want to go get it but my point is this i really value my time more than i value and i value money uh, that so don't get me wrong i totally value money but i really value my time and the time it would take to read I think just today alone, the number of emails just from Gap <laughs> are just crazy. And Fashion Nova, like they're competing, they're running neck and neck in my inbox right now for the most like 70% dot dot 90%. Um, I would rather just go buy what I want when I want it. And like I said, I am not, never gonna ignore a great deal. If I can get first class plane tickets cheaper, gonna go after that deal. If I can buy a car and get a deal on it and it's a car that I want, 
totally gonna take it, not a problem. But I'm also, but I, I'm also the kind of person who understands inherently that you do, you're trading your 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 energy for a thing. And so the more energy I have to expend, whether that's in time or money, the more I'm gonna want something from that thing that I'm expending the energy on. And so many of the things that are in my inbox right now are just not things I wanna have to think about. There, I said it. Um, and I sell digital products, I sell eBooks. Um, in fact, I've got two more books coming out soon. And, and I have a whole program that goes along with it because I'm creating a course called The Magic of Starting Over. Because, um, you know, we're 40 and we're in the next best chapter of our life and we're starting over. This is our time and I want it. Anyway, so The Magic of Starting Over. That's the working title right now. Anyway, um, what the thing that I value so much is my time. More than money, I value my time. I value money because it buys me time. I would pay someone to go through the three, 300 and some emails in my inbox, or I might just click delete and delete all of them and never actually open them up. I don't know yet. What I do know is this, Cyber Monday is here and the emails are still coming. They're, they've already started. And as I was sitting prepping for my podcast that I'm about to record, I was like, I was thinking to myself, I don't have a real, I don't have a big issue with consumption because life, you know, I have to consume things in order to live. I'm consuming electricity, uh, internet access, cell phone, um, hardware. I, we're always consuming, and so I don't get off my high horse about consumption. Um, but what I do think about is, where is my energy going, and what's the what's the cost? What's the cost? So, one of the things about starting over, you know, the magic of starting over is that. For me, the cost of something is not just how much I physically pay for it, but how much I mentally, emotionally, and spiritually pay for it. How much of myself do I have to give to this endeavor, this thing, this person, this opportunity, this this uh, whatever. And if that cost feels out of sync with what I'm gonna get in return, I'd rather just not play. And in some ways, this rush to purchase on these three days to get everything together, to get, you know, to, to get it all <laughs> worked out to where you've got the funnel, the landing pages, the products, the markdowns, the discount codes, to get all that together without a team, because I'm a one woman show, is very difficult, number one. And number two, the cost to return on investment for a lot of people is not working out well. And I say that because I belong to a lot of entrepreneur groups where there's a lot of work that went into Black Friday for a lot of people and they didn't see the kind of return that they'd hoped that they would see for what they put out there. And I think it's because from the consumer perspective, I'm over it. I am so burned out on emails. I don't wanna see another video telling me to buy now or you know, this is on sale. I don't, I don't wanna see another, my Facebook feed is full of advertisements, my Instagram feed is full of advertisements, my inbox is full of advertisements, and it really just feels like you're going from ad to ad to ad and not post to post to post. It doesn't really necessarily feel like anymore that you're getting, you might be getting great quality on certain things, but you can't really appreciate it because there's just so much coming at you. There's so much coming at you. And as Cyber Monday rolls around, there's gonna be an entire another day of everything just coming at you. And so, how are you gonna choose peace? How are you gonna choose peace? Um, how are you gonna become non-negotiable with how you spend your time and what you pay attention to and where you give your attention? Because if I've learned anything from the pandemic, it's that we, we collectively, as a, as a world, weren't paying attention to the little things in our life that really needed us to pay attention to them. And then when we had to pay attention to the things in our life that were important to us, we didn't know what the heck to do. There was a lot of, you know, <laughs> uh, how do I spend all this time and what do I do when I'm not working and, and how do I balance uh, we learned really quickly that the work-life balance thing is a myth. And I come from the world of academics and I come from 
the land of communications, what my degrees are in, um, and studying family dynamics is part of what I used to study. And there was always this conversation about work-life balance. How do you balance it all? And I don't know, for some reason, it feels like this Friday is underscoring the really real and raw reality that you're not, nobody's balancing work and life without a lot of help. The tribe that we euphemistically talk about, it takes a village to raise a tribe. It takes a village to be an adult. It takes a village to be an adult, period. Um, people are flocking to videos on YouTube to learn how to do things that they hadn't had time to figure out how to do because most of us have been working since we were 18. Since we got into you know, our first job and we might have gone to college and we got out of college and we've been working ever since. <clears throat> and because of the state of education, a lot of people don't know how to boil an egg. <laughs> they don't know how to chop an onion or to sew a button um, or to fix a, a stuffed animal, which I've fixed two in the past week. But, you know, the pandemic really underscored how much we don't know about the balance that we're trying to find. And when you're starting over at a certain age, over the age of 40, starting over after 40 is the name of my YouTube channel if you want to follow along over there, um, which you'll hear, you can get copies of the podcast. I do videos like this. This will be posted over there. Um, when you're starting over and you start thinking about what's non-negotiable in your life, what's really important in your life. For me, being in alignment is more important than being in balance because I'm gonna tell you right now, my life is never gonna be balanced. Not gonna happen. I'm gonna to swing to extremes all the time. I'm going, it's my personality. Uh, I'm going to focus on one thing to the detriment of others because that's just how life works. I'm raising a, a, a little boy. I'm very focused on being a mother, uh, being a writer, being an entrepreneur, taking care of our lives in a certain way, which means other things, you know, I'll have time for that. But being in alignment is something I'm pretty non-negotiable on. And what does that mean? Coming back to my inbox. <laughs> there was a point to all of this. So coming back to my inbox, I realized that I get a lot of emails and, uh, yeah, emails and texts because now with community, the SMS texting app, I'm also on a bunch of text messaging lists, which, boy, um, but I, 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 there's a thread that you can see throughout the emails and the text messages that I get of the things that I'm interested in. And they align pretty much with who I have been uh, in my life. And so, um, but I don't know that they align with who I'm going to become the next year and what I see myself doing as 2022 pops off. And so I was looking at the 300 and some un unanswered emails in my inbox and I thought, what would be the most aligned thing for me to do? If, if part of my big rocks, you know, I talk about the big rocks a lot, is to be non-negotiable about my alignment with my spirit. Like, I want things that feel good to be a part of my inbox. And some things you can't do anything about, right? You know, I have an ex-husband. Uh, sometimes those communications aren't great. Um, people want to get paid. I don't mind, actually, I don't mind bill collectors because, I mean, I, again, I pay bills because I use things. Um, but sometimes, you know, things come into your inbox that you have no control over. Okay, that's what spam is for. <laughs> so let's just take it to spam. By the way, if you end up in spam, I'll never see you again because I empty my spam literally every, I just click the little trash can symbol and I know it says that, oh, in 30 days we'll delete it. I don't wanna see it, I don't, I don't care. Well, if it's in spam, it wasn't important. And if I missed it, cause it got to spam and didn't get whitelisted or whatever to my inbox, then so be it. Um, but What's important to me is to be in alignment with what's coming in, coming into my inbox that I actually want to come into my inbox. So I have several email accounts, several. I already know that I'm gonna pare that down to probably three. My business account, my family account, and then uh, a throwaway account that I use to get other things <laughs> and which I don't answer. I never look at the emails that come into that account because it, because I simply use it to give out to collect the thing that I want and then I and then I walk away. And I bet you a lot of you do the same thing. And if you don't, 
get yourself a throwaway account. You never have to check it. Literally, you never have to check it. You get signed up, you use it for all the junk that you're gonna sign up for that you really want to get this free thing or you wanna get this whatever, and they require an email address to get it because everybody does these days, then you just give them a junk email and you move on and you never have to see another email. And if you want to get their newsletter or their offers, then you give them one of your legitimate email accounts. That's all, it's pretty simple. Um, but because I have five <laughs> email accounts, four, five, five, I have five, and then my son has two, um, because I, I, uh, I own his domain names and his email name. I own his name via email. What's important to me is to make sure that what's coming into my inbox in my email accounts is, is an alignment, number one, and that it doesn't become a time suck because all we've done is traded the telemarketer for the email, that's it. And so there's no, no email list. There's no, <laughs> the no call list is actually gone too. That's a, beside the point. But there's no, no email list. So whenever you do something, you have to sign up and give them your email. Those things are never gonna go away. But I can choose to have a dummy account set up where all of that stuff just flows that way. And I just keep the stuff that's important to me in my main email. And then for my business, the same thing. You know, I have a business email that I sometimes have to put in for things to get things. I want it to be attached to my business account. That turns out to be, you know, annoying because I get five or six emails from a company or a person or whatever. And I can choose to filter that into a folder. So I can set up a, something to get that taken care of. The whole point of this though, is to remind you that it may be worth your time tomorrow, today, Cyber Monday. It might be worth your time to sit down before you spend another, before you swipe your credit card again for something else. Um, Cause there's gonna be some great things on sale today. I've already, Amazon's already sending me treasure truck notifications and I just got a text from some, somebody's SMS just sent me another text about something that's, there's the thing, something's expiring and somebody sent me a something and I couldn't even tell you anymore. They come so frequently right now. Um, but it's probably not a bad day to think about what brings you joy in the day? What, what brings you joy in the day? Is it the notifications that are dinging on your phone of somebody's latest 90% off today, uh, which is a great deal, right? Not knocking it at all. But is it making you anxious when that happens in your inbox? Or does it make you excited? Or can you ignore it and be neutral about it? The, the bell the bell of our phones is kind of like conditioning and it conditions us to need to see who's who's contacting us. What did they say? It shocks people when I say, if you send me a Facebook Messenger message, I may not see that because I don't have those notifications on. I used to have them on and they went off all the time. And between those and my actual text messaging app that I have uh, for people who don't use Facebook Messenger, I was just like, I, I don't I don't need to have Facebook Messenger going off with me at all times. Um, so I turned it off, turned off notifications. I also uh, have turned off notifications for several apps that I use so that I don't know that they've updated or someone's changed something or done something. Um, and I like it. I absolutely like it. And I don't think that I'm gonna go back to getting notifications like crazy anymore because I like the silence of my phone. I love my phone. I have a smartphone, it's, I have Google Pixel. I love Google Pixel, I love it. I love all the bells and whistles and the fun things I can do with it. And I like the time it saves me because lots of things are integrated together and I can log in over here to cover all of this. Love, love, love all of that. And then I remind myself, it's just a little computer. It does what I say for the most part. It does what I say. And if I don't want to hear notifications, I don't actually have to. There's no law that says I have to listen to notifications on an app just because an app's on my phone. So I turn them off. I turn them off all the time. And then I miss things. And I realized that I didn't actually miss it. I just didn't respond to it immediately. And yes, I am of the generation who understands that not everybody likes to make a phone call, so they text, um, which is fine. I don't mind that. 
I, I appreciate the fact that some folks, you know, not everybody wants to get on the phone. And I don't answer every phone call that rings. I have two phone numbers, <laughs> right? I have my personal phone number and I have a business phone number. Um, but what I, oh, yeah, see, my phone's like, uh, it's time for you to get off. This is why I love smartphones because they can be set up to remind you about alignment and balance. And, Balance, yes, but more so alignment. Um, so part of my 2021, 2020, 2021 pandemic life realization was that I am a night owl, but I have to I have to function during the day earlier than I might appreciate. So I have to go to bed by a certain time so that I can at least get up and function. I got a kid, got to get up. Um, so right now I could stay awake for the, other, for the next two hours and be fine, but then I can't get up when I need to get up to function in the way that I need to. And so um, I'll be going to bed shortly because that's what my phone just reminded me was that, hey, guess what? I'm about to shut. It doesn't shut down, but it goes into this lovely sleep mode where everything goes black and white. Everything gets softer. Uh, it's, it takes away all the color. It takes away all the sound. It'll stay on. It'll let me do all kinds of things. It'll be done in black and white and there'll be no sound. And that's really soothing and it it forces my brain to begin to disconnect anyway so that notification has popped up that like chop chop sister because you've already paused this a couple times and we're ready to go to bed what are you going to do cyber monday different than you did on black friday are you going to i mean are you gonna get in there and and <laughs> read every email go to every website online, catch every Cyber Monday deal. Like I know Target's just, there's so many of them. If you do more power to you, I think it's awesome. Go spend your money. It's been a rough couple of years. I wish everyone abundance and prosperity over the holidays. Do it, do it, do it, do it. But while you're doing it, ask yourself, does this give me my time back? Because some people are like, I'm shopped and done for the holidays. Like, this is it. I'm done. We're good. We're golden. Some people are still going to be shopping in, you know, for weeks um, because they will have need to buy certain things that are not on sale for Cyber Monday because not everything is on sale for Cyber Monday. But the most important thing is to remember the most important thing. Jim Quick says that. And I like it. Um, the most important thing is to remember the most important thing. The most important thing is how do you feel after this this weekend? Do you feel drunk on the amount that you've spent and the sales that you've gotten? Do you feel like you've, do you feel like you are worn out from all of this? Or do you feel like you've accomplished something and that your spirit feels good because you were able to bring um, joy to your, to your life by getting this done and saving a ton of money at the same time? Hopefully it's the latter. If it's the former, shut things off. Shut things off. It's never. It's not going to kill anyone to go to the store to buy something on Tuesday, on Tuesday or Wednesday, or even Thursday, um, <clears throat> or even Friday. There are lots of sales on Friday. Lots of sales on the weekends. But if you feel as though you don't really want. <laughs> to have this kind of experience again. If you look at your inbox today on Cyber Monday and you say, I don't ever want to see this many emails in my inbox ever again. I don't want to do it. Or I don't want to this time next year when Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday rolls around again. I want to be in a different headspace about what I'm going to do to consume the things that I want to consume without being consumed by the whole process because that's what it feels like. It feels like we are consuming, but we're also being consumed. Honestly, every email, I'm just like, could you all just stop for the love? Could you stop sending me emails about the exact same thing? I know it's on sale. You told me 15 times today that it's on sale. I get it. Do you feel as though you've been consumed or have you been the consumer who's been able to dip your toe in, get what you need and come back out without feeling overwhelmed by the process. Overwhelmed by that process. And do you wanna feel 
less overwhelmed, even more so next year when this all rolls around. Because again, I'm not knocking Black Friday, not at all. All the things I had, I had three things on sale. I put out the information. I did not spam my list. I did not do it. Um, and that was against the advice of my, um, <laughs> uh, some people in my world. But I know how I felt as the, as Wednesday really started the emails rolling in and I was so over it. I was over it. I didn't open a darn email. I was like, I'm done. And I mean, I, and I love some of the people who emailed me. I follow them religiously. I, and I, I open their stuff, right? I totally get it. I didn't open their stuff either because there was so much other stuff coming in that it didn't even matter that it was from some of my favorite people. It didn't matter. Like I love a young, um, Lisa Nichols didn't open any of her stuff. I love Bob Proctor, opened none of his stuff. None of it. Mary Morrissey opened none, 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 none. Nehemiah Davis, none, mm -mm. zip. <laughs> I ain't care. I wanna hear it. I don't wanna read it. I don't wanna see another video, another sales pitch. I don't read another, I don't wanna read another, uh, um, I, no, no, nothing. I opened none of them. And I breathed a lot deeper for the choice. I breathe a lot deeper for the choice. Now you may say, Dr. Sashin, you probably missed out on like a 90% off. I, I might have. I might have. I'm sure that since most people have been advertising what they were going to do for Black Friday for a week now, I'm pretty certain that if there was anything that I wanted that I didn't know was coming, I didn't need it. I didn't need it because all my favorites had been talking about their Black Friday sales ad nauseum for at least a week. And so... Wednesday, when the emails really started coming in, those weren't for me. They weren't for me. And so I told I didn't need to partake of them because I already knew what the offers were going to be because they've been talking about them. I, I pay attention to them all the time before Black Friday. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, you don't have to open all these emails. You, The people that you want to pay attention to, you've been paying attention to them. So you could just choose to ignore all the all the noise and the chatter of everybody else who's trying to get your attention. So what are you gonna do next year? We can do this year. I recommend two things. Number one, unsubscribe for some, from some stuff. If you got a freebie and you're like, I, I don't even know who this, like, I remember buying something from them or getting on their mailing list for something and now I'm just like, why am I getting, like, stop it. Unsubscribe from some stuff. Ask yourself, who am I gonna be in 2022? Does this email still serve me? Or, or is it no longer in alignment with who I'm becoming? And if the answer is, it's no longer in alignment with who I'm becoming, unsubscribe. Click, click, two clicks. Unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Done, done, done. Clean the slate. Take out the trash. Sweep it out. Bring your email and your text message, SMS list under control so that you feel like you've, that you can venture into your inbox and not have to wait through. I, I guarantee you for every one legitimate email I get, there are at least 10 promotional emails from 10 different people. I, I don't need any more of that. I don't need any more of that. Um, so number one, I would suggest that you unsubscribe. You start asking yourself, does this email actually serve me in a way that helps me grow? Now, not when I got it, because <laughs> I might have got it two years ago, but does it help me grow n now? Did I go to a summit and I'm on their email list still? Did I get a freebie from someone that I was following and I'm on their email list still, but, but I don't really follow them that way anymore? Did I, did I sign up for notifications? for a special something that was over six months ago and I just never unsubscribe because that's how it happens, right? We just never unsubscribe because it's too hard and you got some time right now. You got some time. You've spent Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that. You spent the money to buy some time. So it's Cyber Monday. You got some time on your lunch break. On the, you know, when you get home tonight, Ask yourself, do I need this email? If the answer is no, just scroll down. 
click unsubscribe. The second thing that I might suggest to you, and this is a soft sell, it's not even open yet. Think about the magic of starting over and what that might mean for you. What does it look like to decide to start again? What does it look like for you to reimagine life after the age of 40, if you're 40 or if you're 50? What does it mean to decide to become non-negotiable about your happiness, to live well, and to thrive because you're in the second best half of your life. What does all of that look like? The magic of starting over is in understanding who you're going to become. Doesn't have to be who you've been. You can keep parts of you, of course. But the magic is the decision. Sorry about that. It's the decision. And so think about it. And if you think you might be interested in a webinar, fleshing out the idea of the magic for starting over, sign up. There's a sign up link. That's it. That's all I got. Um, no hard sell. No hard sell. <laughs> um, the magic of, of, of starting over is a course. It's gonna be a course. Uh, and the webinar if you choose to sign up, it's free. If you choose to sign up, it's gonna be a preview of what the course would entail. Full transparency, full disclosure. Um, and if that interests you, if you're interested in learning how, how to do your affirmations so that they're more effective and they get you the results that you want faster, if you're interested in building a tribe to do the adulting thing in the second half of life. Mm. Um, if you're interested in putting the anxiety and the fear of aging behind you so that you can get on with the business of living, pull up, sign up. Yes, it's signing up for another email, dang it. But the nice thing is, I'm only gonna send you emails that say, hey, here's the date for the webinar. You remember you signed up for this? We're, we're having it. It's this date and this time. Come on over. Hang out with us. Decide if you want to take the next step. That's it. And if you don't, unsubscribe and everything will be fine. Because ultimately, I hope 2022 brings a lot more joy and a lot more peace, a lot more fun, and a lot less email. Yeah, a lot less email. All right. It's at 32 minutes and 53 seconds. And this girl is tired, so I'm going to bed. Have a great night. Enjoy your Cyber Monday. And uh, yeah, drop me a, a DM if you want more information about this, uh, the magic of starting over. And go unsubscribe from some things. I dare you. It's Dr. Sasheen, also known as the Bliss Doctor, coming to you recorded on Cyber Monday. Have a great day, everyone. Enjoy.